Hi everybody, I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing to help them with sleep. You've also shared some things about life and stress. So I'm gonna read your goals here in a minute. Thank you so much for reaching out and requesting support. It's an honor to meet you. It's an honor to help you today. Thank you for sharing with us here on YouTube. Okay, so here's what you write. You say, I need help sleeping. I know it's from stress. I'm definitely struggling in life and it's hard to turn my mind off at night. I can't function with insomnia. It's only creating more problems, more stress, more exhaustion and still no sleep. Any help I can get will be greatly appreciated. Okay. All right, I'm gonna dive in and we're gonna see what happens here. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do to help you with this predicament. <sighs> Obviously, we're gonna be looking at stress and how stress is affecting your mind. The echoes of the day, for instance, attachment to echoes of the day, for instance, could be in there. And uh, I'm not sure what the best way to navigate this is yet, but let's see what comes, okay? I'm just gonna get in the zone. Okay. It's a pretty harsh image for starters. Kind of hard to look at. The first inspiration I had was just slowing the energy down, okay? I slow my energy down. Then I slow your energy down and together we just slow down because what's sleeping all about slowing down and I place my hands just on your head. Okay. And just to generate warmth and kindness and gentleness in order to slow down the frequencies in there. Okay. <laughs> and the image instantly changes a bit morbid, but we're going to work with it because really your situation is kind of morbid, isn't it? There was uh, you lying in a bed and something jumps on your throat and has like its thumbs or fingers and just pushes them into your eyeballs. I actually see your eyeballs squish in your face. So yes, morbid. Okay. It's a tyrant, it's a little terrorist, it's a, a gremlin, it's a, a little animal, it's a, Okay, it's turning into something from small into big. <sighs> something big, like a big black gorilla is sitting on your chest and then choking you, okay? And it's, again, morbid because you don't have eyeballs. So this is this way, the energy is speaking this way because your situation is extreme, okay? And your situation is strangling you. Big and small is strangling you. And literally taking your eyeballs out in a morbid way. So it's about perception and pain and perception. And then trying to remove the pain and perception isn't really working. <laughs> and it's choking you. It's putting pressure on your chest and pressure on you. So we'll just let it circulate, okay? And just let it circulate. These can just be projections of your stress, projections of what you're juggling in life, projections. <sighs> just letting it circulate and slowing it down. So I'm slowing down the little tyrant. I'm slowing down the big gorilla. I'm slowing down problems big and small. Problems I want to let you go. And I'm, I'm just, yes, problems are going to let you go. So the problems have to, because you are choosing to let the problems go, therefore the problems don't exist. 
And problems don't get to decide whether they get to let you go or not. You let them go. And then they disappear. We can't actually work through problems when we're sleeping. We work through problems when we're awake. So there has to be a learning curve here. What is your responsibility to problems when it comes to bedtime? <sighs> there might be some learning um, for your body, your mind, your emotions, your perceptions and stuff um, that we can actually accomplish here in this session. And then it helped to minimize attachment to, I desperately need to be attached to, or it's not letting go of me. But all it is is... There's so much in the connection, juice, all right, and flow that we're not going to put the juice into it. It's like I'm on a coffee binge and I'm juicing up my relationship with big and small problems choking me and strangling me and pun puncturing out my eyeballs. And that's not actually nurturing or feeding you at all. But maybe life doesn't feel like it's nurturing, feeding you. So maybe this is life blown out of proportion. But maybe this is how life truly feels right now. So, so we're just talking, okay? We just see what comes next. All the while, these images don't get to hurt you anymore. So I just, whoop, tiny, disappear, goodbye. Tiny, disappear, goodbye. Like, goodbye. Give you your eyeballs back. There's a new thing here, kind of uh, like a scorpion tail, like a toxic poisonous tail is like lodged into the back of your third eye. And it's not just um, like a knife stabbed in. It um, has to do with your sacral chakra. So it is intimately feeding off of your suffering. Um, so your sacral chakra is involved in it. Your sacral chakra is in here, in the back of your mind. <laughs> so strange when that happens. You're getting, um, it's almost like a thing is making love to your pain back here. <laughs> and is like engorged. It's really um, distorted. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put your sacral chakra back where it goes. And it's a little bit uh, disturbing here as well because there's a, a part of me that comes in. I don't know if it's me or you, but um, comes in and just it, it's almost like with evil eyes, angry eyes, looks at this thing attached to the back of the head with a small knife. Literally, I can feel pressing into that tail and cutting the tail off and looking into the eyes of the thing as it screams in agony. Like, no, you're not going to go away from me until you actually endure some kind of torture or pain for what you did to myself. Like, so there's like uh, this, this revolting action. Like, like, how dare you? I will murder you for that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's happening before I can move your sacral chakra. No, we got to we got to tell this thing um, how we feel about that. <laughs> OK, that's actually venting. That's actually healthy because here in the energy world um, you're going through a lot and sometimes there's a lot of different voices in there that are just, they just have to get their screams or their whatever's out. So it's, it's just a thing right now. And the question is, does it help you feel better? Is this a real um, parasitic entity? Um, is it an aspect of yourself? Because remember, everything that is outside of you is also you. So what you hurt, even if... So a part of you is hurting yourself. And then the solution is to hurt it back and then remove it and tell it who's boss. Like, so it's, it's like, what's the most effective solution? That's like taking it into your own hands to handle it in this way. But is it the most effective solution? You, you, okay. Okay, you have many yous now. So I'm still working on bringing this into your sacral chakra. Still working on pulling the tail out now that you just cut off. 
and then seeing the thing and, and it's all red. It's I see um, lots of these. It kind of looks like a lobster in a way, but not. Um, bright red in color. Long tail like a scorpion. Maybe a scorpion is more what it looks like, but make it bigger like a lobster. And they see their tailless scorpions are everywhere. There's thousands of tailless scorpions now in a desert environment. And good riddance, you know? A thousand times over, good riddance, good riddance, good riddance, good riddance. A thousand times over, good riddance. But it's not solving this problem. It's just a, you keep replaying the same video here. So I tell you, there's no scorpion, okay? There's no thing that is lodged in the back of your head, intimately feeding off of your suffering. Because that's how we move energy, okay? We just make it disappear. And the more of this, these are these echoes here, the more of this that we just minimize, then it's not there. So then we can start working with what we want to be there. This might be how it feels, okay? <sighs> Why can't I, why are you not allowing me to move your sacral chakra back where it goes? You're, you're putting it in your head for some reason. All the love of life, all the intimate meaning of life, all the pleasures of life, everything that makes you feel beautiful or ugly even, worthless or worthwhile, like... Sacral chakra is a complicated place. It's about your sacredness. So you don't want that chakra energy. You want it to be lodged in the head. So then your third eye and your sacral are working together to sort out your life. So the sacredness of you and the perceptive eye are working together to sort out your life. And so the perceptive eye can be ego-based. It has a tendency to go th in that direction. Ego and logic come first. Creativity uh, is somewhere in there. Freedom with creative self-expression, working with new ideas, building upon new experiences, the joy of um, the unknown and is also part of a creative experience that we don't have to be fearful of. Ego, right? So the mind is... Um, quite an extraordinary place. <sighs> now let's say your sacral chakra and your heart are working together. Let's say your mind and your heart and your sacral chakra are working together. Let's say everything is getting heart-centered here. What would that mean? That everything you're going through right now in life, when you pull it into the center of your heart, you're actually working with a heart-centered you. There's no control. There's no necessarily logic about it. It's all about love and connection. Um, and yeah, you can have a broken heart sometimes. So how is it? How are you going to be able to navigate all this information in the heart? But beneath the surface of every break, there is something benevolent. I'm going to start doing that. I'm just going to actually place your, your third eye and your sacral chakra from the third eye area. I'm going to place them both into your heart. And let's see what that does here. Everything gets really angry at me. Like, um, I'm just sending it away. So it's great. But now we need to listen to solutions. Anger isn't a solution. It isn't. It's like a, an outrageous fuel that doesn't actually accomplish anything. Solutions are, what can I do today? Are these problems that I can solve today? What can I do to work towards a solution? What am I struggling with with my emotions today? What makes me feel like I'm lacking in my circumstance? How do I need to smile and hug and express more love instead of 
trying to solve problems with anger is never going to work. That feeling like the problems are choking you, that's all part of how we're trying to solve problems with anger is just like staying and ruminating in that place of, of suffering, you know? The stresses of life. Because I know when the stresses of life get out of control, it's like you're trying to survive chaos and you aren't going to be enough and it's crushing you and you might start building outlandish behaviors. But just breathe, okay? <sighs> just breathe. It's sensibility. Sensibility. Third eye, we're going to start there with the heart. Third eye hates this. Doesn't belong here. Heart, interesting. There's a being that's coming up from beneath the surface. It's coming up like a fish in a fish tank. It's just like rising up to the top of the fish tank. So it's like coming up into the heart. And the being is like perplexed. Is looking at this um, third eye and the third is like, humph! <laughs> like this, okay? <laughs> and I see uh, the heart is evaluating, all right? Like up and down evaluation. And the heart's kind of like um, a jolly uh, uh, female type. Um, I want to call it a butler, but it represents female energy, but is all about the caretaking. And it creates a little round table and a hot cup of tea. For ego, for mind, for third eye. <laughs> and to wind it down, to relax it. A cup of tea is like chamomile. <laughs> ego, it's like very ego-based third eye. Um, it's very spiteful about this annoying, shameful um, representation of help. How dare you give me chamomile tea? How dare you? <laughs> How dare you assess me as somebody who needs to relax? How dare you? <laughs> That's funny. And it's just like, well, I could use some chamomile. I thought maybe we could drink some together. So like heart's very sensible. Sacral chakra is like a quivering leaf in the corner, like an abused child, literally beaten with, like stoned to death, okay? Like being stoned covered in bruises and broken parts and um, quivering like a leaf. I just keep seeing that quivering leaf and then a child quivering and I see a horrible event of being stoned to death but somehow surviving. Nowhere to go, nobody to help you. And it's really hard for your sacral chakra to find the strength to even stand and then walk to the table. But this uh, sort of female butler type, I don't want to call her a maid because she doesn't represent cleaning so much as uh, maintaining, um, it seems like a schedule within a household, a schedule for, for meals and what was going to be cooked and what dates, like appointments. And I don't know, there's something more of a profession um, that's more than just uh, cleaning. Um, there's something more to the profession. Like, I'm the caretaker of the home. And this uh, female butler is basically bold and telling the child, you are strong enough to come stand and sit down at the table and I will pour you a cup of chamomile. And it's really hard to watch. I mean, it's, it's like watching an animal get hit by a car and then try to stand and walk its way off the road. And it's just very hard to watch. So it's... Yeah, that's what your sacral chakra is be beaten down, okay? The sacredness of you is beaten down. Yeah, it's a child's already in the chair. Like, almost like all you had to do was want to stand and want to sit at the chair and want to have the chamomile and bam, it would be done. And so the child drinks the chamomile. It tastes terrible. It's, ugh. It, I don't know, rot. It tastes like rot. Like, like black mold or something. And the child cries and says, I cannot get my needs met. Like, the best I can get is black mold for a freaking cup of chamomile. 
Like I can't heal, but what's weird is it tastes foul. This child in sacral chakra is com you know, communicating about the suffering of it. But I actually see the child's bruises are disappearing. I see the colors coming back into their cheeks. I see they look a, a pretty dress, um, a very feminine energy, uh, kind of like a Goldilocks character. And it's strange because the unexpected is that um, this is bad for me, but what is good for you seems like the bad, I, the, the bad thing, uh, but it's actually the healthy thing. So this, so, okay, you can see how this is communicating a message that something of you because of the stress is going to encourage you to resist the solutions that are actually going to help you feel at peace is going to mend the wounds, help you feel not so bruised and battered, but actually turn you into um, a happy-go-lucky Goldilocks character, okay? So you need to seek that what you, you're, it's like, you have the know-how to make self-loving decisions and to put that at the forefront so somewhere in you, at the heart of you, is a professional caretaker of the home, the butler figure, okay? Something inside of you knows exactly what is needed here. The chamomile tea, um, a peaceful, su supportive space um, where we can wind down, yes, because winding down is what you need. And there's a renouncing for, of this, a defilement. Um, how dare you tell me I need to relax? Like, how dare you? You know what? All of that is working through letting go and letting go and letting go and just admitting what is it that I actually need here in order to be my strongest self. We're still unwinding you, okay? <laughs> and this uh, Goldilocks sacral chakra is shown a mirror of herself and she can't even believe what she's seeing. She's actually a little bit um, embarrassed that she looks this good because <laughs> she's not supposed to. She's supposed to look like an animal ju that just got hit by a car. And somehow she's falling in love with the truth that she's radiant. Ego's like this bitter, grumpy man. He stinks. Um, he kind of smells like maybe somebody who works in a factory or works in a mine or sweats profusely for a 12-hour day, Monday through Sunday, but doesn't have the means to take a bath. Smokes and drinks. Um, there's just like a smell, you know? of sweat and body odor and alcohol and cigarettes and filth, okay? Dirtiness, dirty hands. But ego doesn't want to admit that there's anything wrong with looking and smelling like this. Okay, I'm actually... I'm supporting ego with the memory that the tea was already drinking. Because somewhere in time, yes, the tea was already drinking. So this is third eye, really um, over and saturated with the ego than even logic or creativity. Because ego kind of controls what you get to think about and how you get to feel about it. Because ego wants to control the feelings. It wants to control your voice. It wants to control the sacral chakra. It wants to hold people into... To, um, patterns of abuse even. Ego is... Man, you gotta be mindful of that stuff. Because it it's very convincing. And it'll feel like the truth. But it's actually imprisoning you in the place of suffering. Why would ego want that? It's weird. Because it's afraid all the time. It's always in conflict. So it's a, it's afraid. Oh man, you needed you needed to something just went it broke like the egg just cracked and the yolk just fell out. <sighs> I 
You're afraid. That's, that's what's at the root of all of this, is you're afraid. So all this uh, circus of scenes and morbidness and cut off scorpion tails and scorpion bodies and bruised, stoned to death child that barely survived. You know, stinky, um, filthy, can't bathe even if I wanted to. Ego man is afraid. It's all fear. It's fear that is keeping you from sleeping. What is, what is it that you're afraid of? Truly. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> we gotta work on this one. <coughs> it's funny. When, when you start, like, hitting some nodes of, like, some kind of authentic thing was just said there. It's weird how all these twisted parts get pissed because it's like, no, my pain is real. It will always be real and stop helping me. <laughs> it's like your pain is an illusion that you're holding on to and torturing yourself with because you're a coward. Trust me, that word coward is really harsh. And uh, is it fear? Is it cowardice? Like what creates the coward within us? You know, we're all cowards in some way or another. But boy, does ego hate hearing that word. But this is the aspects of you that, that don't want to hear the truth that you're afraid. Like they just, it's, it's harder to know how to work through that one. Oh man, I, I'm so sorry to have to say that to you. It's like, I feel like I just, I literally feel like I just beat you down by just saying that. Because the energy it's going to take for you to face a fear, you might as well just be de destroying yourself now. That is why you're not sleeping. See how we go through these life events and we, we it's hard to get the conscious clarity. Um. And so it's just stress, right? It's just life it, on full blast, chaotic, just we're in the blender. It's hard to find the ground. It's hard to have these like just simple conversations and get there. So what you're afraid of, it's going to, how are you going to unpack it? How are you going to work through it? How long is it going to take? It's an inconceivable you that you're becoming and you're afraid of it. Ego is afraid of the inconceivable you. You don't even know who you are. So you got to go through this hard time to discover what you're made out of, discover who you truly are on the other side. You will get there. You always, we always get there. We will always get there. As a human race, we'll get there. As individuals, we'll get there. Man, that really created um, quite a... Uh, dense sensation like wow your third eye is really really doing something in here i don't feel anything in the back of it and i actually feel your sacral chakra is part of your aura now and it's a part of all the chakras it's a part of your heart it's part of your aura now and it's like welcoming third eye to become part of the aura and heart to become part of the aura like let's not fear being ourself in all our vibrancy as part of our aura you know, our voice is part of our aura. So throat chakra, part of the aura. The crown chakra, higher mind, part of the aura. Our emotions, part of the aura. It's like the ocean of your energy, all connected. Your root chakra, part of the aura, right? Your heart is part of the aura. So it's something is comforting and blanketing, um, tucking you in into a cozy sense of strength, actually. It's a cozy place to be strong in yourself, not a rough and bitter, harsh place, but a cozy place to be strong in yourself. And I don't feel that defining you as a coward or fearful exists here because all you can be is the best you can be. All you can do is try your best and give yourself room for saying, you know what, I did my best today. Okay, so 
All right, so all that reaction about the conversation that you're afraid. All that reaction. How are you feeling now? Your aura is so much, it's like a rainbow. And for you to acknowledge that you are like a rainbow of light and color and flow and vibrancy. It actually helps you breathe because it seems like this scares you. Not being able to sleep scares you. And so you don't want to be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of going to bed at night. Seems like that scares you. Because it might be another night where you're just living a very long day just to live a very long day again. So yeah, it's a bit of torture for sure. But we have to start working with the truth that you can be peaceful, you can rest easy. <sighs> All right, I, I'm asking the universe here, we could come full circle on this. What is the most solid message and assessment of every single thing thus far that we could share with you to really help you feel centered, at ease, peaceful. The truth is the rainbow aura. The truth is your chakras are singing. The truth is you are comfortably strong. The truth is you can unpack what you're going through, no problem, one day at a time. The truth is, there aren't any problems. The truth is, this is a problem-free life. And drink some chamomile because it's nice. <laughs> and it's comforting. And it's natural. And something healthy about it, you know. So your higher self, it's kind of fairy-like. She has a magical wand and all that. She's wearing a pink dress. She's a human-sized fairy. She's coming from a silvery light. And she kind of boinks you on the head with her, her magical wand. And you turn into a fountain. And the fountain is pushing, is like under a great deal of pressure. And suddenly something bursts and all the pressure is coming out like water. And you become beautiful. And because of the pressure... You're releasing the water and your beautiful fountain. And you're crying as the fountain itself. Which again is what makes a fountain worth being a fountain. Fountains are monuments of crying, I guess. <laughs> that we, we appreciate the pressure and the water of their tears, you know. They're beautiful. You're like a human fountain right now. But the fountain disappears and you're just a person. And it's hard to just be a person. And she scoops you up and she holds you like a baby. And she says, oh, I will take care of you when you struggle to take care of yourself. It's okay, it seems to me, like to have a voice of communication with the love of the universe, like... Like God, I, or, you know, I, I talk to God all the time. So if I'm going through a hard time, I just unpack it with God, basically. Uh, but I let myself feel that God loves me and God's here. And that some things I, I can't, I, like, I don't know how to do it all. I don't. And I'm okay with that. And I want to see the ideal outcome. I might not get it. And I can be okay with that, too. And I'm just going to go through whatever it is. This is about that I think I know and that I don't know anything about because it's always about all things that we know and don't know. And I'm just going to be a little bit um, simple-minded because I don't want to clutch it. You don't have to clutch any of this. You don't have to find um, every language and every book about what you're going through to help define it. It's just It could be an undefinable process of transformation, okay? that you are taken care of, you are held, you are nurtured, 
And you have an incredible self-nurturing ability here too. So this is all inhale, exhale, ease. No gross pictures right now. You just look like images of a beautiful fountain that's not really under pressure or crying, but is just an expression of itself that can be adored for who and what you are. I see a human smiling in a rainbow colored aura and you just glow, you're beautiful. I see bright-eyed child, very Goldilocks-like, like, like um, curious and um, playful and trying new things. Whether get yourself in a good situation or a bad one. Man, there's something spry and fun and spring chicken-like um, about it. Even ego is at peace. I see a grandfather reading a story to a child. It's very comforting to see that. I see the heart feels fulfilled because its voice can be heard throughout your aura, the universe of your aura, and that the heart can help. You have a helpful heart. All right. Thank you so much for this experience. I wish you well. I know this is going to help. <sighs> Giving you a big hug. And thank you everybody for watching. If there's something I could help you with, please reach out and book a session. I'd love to support you. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day.